last year to missions. So that was over and above our budget amount. So. As your pastor, I said to the leadership uh, team, I just want to expose you, uh, introduce you to two gentlemen, uh, Joe Amaral and Ed Dixon. And so we did that in two separate occasions. And it was my plan that they would meet Ed and they would meet Joe and they would choose one of those to be our mission partners over and above Jed and Deb who are our RAN network workers and have been part of TPC's missions program for years. But uh, your, mission, your uh, leadership team said, no, we want both. We want both. And so we formed a partnership over a year and a half ago with Loads of Love and with uh, um, for Liberia. Hope for Liberia, hope, hope for Liberia. Joe Amaral and Ed Dixon. And so it's my pleasure today uh, to have Ed come and share this morning from the Ukraine. And uh, he's on his way to his 12th visit in just a few weeks. And so would you give Ed Dixon a great Timmins Pentecostal <laughs> welcome. I can, maybe I can just use this one. Um, I'll try to stand still. <laughs> I just want to give all praise and glory to Jesus this morning. Praise his holy name. In Christ alone I place my trust. I just love that. Uh, that's what we can do. I'm very thankful to be here this morning. Very thankful hearing about your missions giving. And you really are a giving church. Um, giving people. And I'm very thankful for that. I know the Lord is thankful. And, and genuinely, God uh, is blessed uh, when we give. And I'm, I'm a fortunate uh, uh, receiver of blessings like that, being able to distribute them in places of need. I'm very thankful to be here this morning because I love your pastor. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's a great man of God as I've gotten to know him. And uh, he's been a great blessing to me. And I think the biggest thing is, your pastor, for some strange reason, thinks I'm a big shot. <laughs> and, and you know, it's, it's kind of nice when someone sort of feels, because you know, you know very well that uh, um, most of us, we don't feel like big shots, you know. We, even, no matter what happens in your life, you don't really genuinely, I mean, I'm a, I'm a farmer's son from Leamington, Ontario. I grew up in the tomato fields, you know, that I'm little Eddie Spaghetti as far as my mom is concerned. Uh, you don't really change that much. And, but you know what the amazing thing is? Jesus thinks you're a big shot. He thinks you're significant. It doesn't matter who you are. And if you want to write something in that little space today, if you have a pen, I'd like you to write that. Jesus thinks I'm a big shot. Because he does. He really does. We work with children overseas, uh, children with severe disabilities, many of them without arms and legs who are abandoned by their parents. You know what we tell them? We tell them, you did not come to this earth from your mother and father. You came through your mother and father, from God. God sent you here. And if God sent you here, he has a purpose for your life. He has a reason for, for you being here. And we've seen these children, I, I spoke about it last time, we've seen these children change the world in many cases. Several children from that first orphanage we started to work at, like they have silver bronze and gold medals from the Paralympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, in Tokyo. We've seen these kids do phenomenal things. Just blows me away now to see out of those many children that we were helping, many of them are in Canada now, living in Canada. And uh, their lives have been completely changed and they've had a great impact, not only on other people in Canada, but on me. I've been changed by them. When I meet with these children now, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take much when you're with someone who has no arms and no legs, has made their way to Canada, has gotten permanent residence in Canada, 
and are painting paintings with a brush, like the one girl paints with a brush in her mouth and sells these paintings and makes a great living, has her own apartment. I think to myself, wow, what could I ever complain about? What could I ever feel sorry for, you know? And so uh, I just feel really blessed today. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I hope, uh, I hope that's okay with you. I'm not a preacher. I, I, I love telling stories. And, and I, I think there was a guy, what's his name? Uh, Jesus, yeah. He, <laughs> he told stories and uh, it seemed to work for him. So, uh, so I'm going to do that today. If you bring up that first picture there, uh, I've been extremely blessed uh, to have a uh, wonderful family. Uh, you can't see it in the picture, but uh, before I met my wife, um, I was broken, divorced. I lost, uh, it certainly seemed like I had lost everything, and, and uh, thank God I met a guy who invited me to a Pentecostal church. <laughs> And it changed my life. I remember eight months sitting, like, just sitting in the services. And I kept coming back to the church because, just like for you today, somehow I felt better after the service was done than when I came in. God was doing something in my life. And gradually I got to the point where I realized that most of my life I had just done my own will. I... I had done what I thought was best. I genuinely thought I was making the right choices and I realized that I needed to submit myself to someone else's will and see what would happen, see what he would do. And, uh, and a beautiful morning and many years ago in Chatham, Ontario, I committed my life to Jesus Christ and I said, I'm going to try it. Like, I'm, I want to do your will. I want to see what happens. If I just did God's will every day, what would happen? And God has blessed me so much. I'm, I'm surrounded by beautiful girls now. And uh, um, our oldest daughter is not in this picture. She's married now. She, uh, she's 26. Our youngest daughter is there in the picture. She's six. We have four daughters. And uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, I kind of even hesitate when I think about everything that God has done in my life. And I'm amazed like uh, that God could take someone who's so broken and who's genuinely lost, like really lost with a, with a big, I remember it now, just this big massive black hole in the middle of my soul trying to fill that with everything I could find to fill it with. And God gave me life, gave me hope, gave me joy, fulfillment, a reason to live, a passion, so many things. And God, the creator of the universe, spoke to me. If you think about that, we were talking about that last night. Like, if you think about that, that the God of the universe wants to speak to you. Amen. That's unbelievable. And that he would call us to change the course of our lives and do something significant is, is really, really amazing. You know. I've been uh, in Ukraine for 28 years altogether. We happened to be back in Canada on furlough when the war broke out. And now, of course, I know it was God's mercy on our family to have that happen to seemingly by chance. Because our house was in an area where, uh, where the Russians came in and destroyed uh, most of the houses in that area. And by a miracle, our house was still standing, still standing now. Um, and I've been traveling back and forth and... Sometimes people have asked me, Ed, what does it feel like now, you know, your country? You can imagine if you were from Canada and you went overseas for a year and while you were overseas, war started in Canada. War broke out just unexpectedly. Uh, how would you feel? And I, I said to people, 
You know, it feels like if one of my kids were suddenly in the hospital, in emergency, and there was nothing I could do. All I could do was just go and visit them and, and pray and believe God for a miracle. That's what it feels like. So I'm praying for a miracle. I'm believing that God will do a miracle. And then when I was here last time, I spoke about what was happening in Ukraine. It was um, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I went back to Ontario, well, back to Ontario, back to Barrie, where we live right now. And uh, um, I came down the stairs one morning and my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, Steffi, was standing at the bottom, and she was just white. And I looked at her like, what's going on? And she looked at me. She said, Dad, I just feel like I want to cry. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So I picked her up, and I realized something was seriously wrong, and, and we rushed to the hospital. If you go to the next picture, uh, we got into the hospital. I, I just, all of a sudden... Uh, our, our wor the worst fears that we ever had were happening and they began to attach her to everything there and the doctor actually came over to me and said, your daughter is dying. <sighs> I was like, how can you even say that to someone, you know? Like, do you know what that does to someone to say, but the doctor was just trying to prepare us. And we had no idea what was happening, but it turned out that I don't know if there's any medical people here, but her immune system all of a sudden began to attack her own blood cells. Like, rather than attacking the, the infection, it turned on her and it was destroying her from the inside, like killing her. Within 40 minutes, uh, there was a team from Sick Kids Hospital. I don't know how they got there that fast. They must have been stationed somewhere nearby or something. And they just were getting her all set to move her into an ambulance and take her down to sick kids in Toronto. And, and they told me they could take my wife and my daughter, but they couldn't take me with them. I would have to drive there on my own, which is about an hour's drive from Barrie down there. And, and so I'm preparing myself to... And uh, I, I lean over to my daughter, Steffi, and I just whisper to her, you know, Steffi, everything's going to be all right. And uh, you know what she said? She said, Dad, I love you endless. <laughs> I was like, that's the last thing you needed to say to me right before I leave, you know, to drive by myself to the hospital. And you can imagine, I was just a mess the whole way there. I shouldn't have even been driving. You know, I was like crying. And, and I made my way there and I got to the hospital and they were still, they'd started blood transfusions and over the, course of the next couple of days they did I think six uh, blood transfusions and kept and they said we're just hoping that maybe things will turn around and click and she'll you know her immune system will kick in properly and we're believing and we're believing I'm praying we're telling different people to pray with us Sunday afternoon we were in the room with her and I knew people were praying on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, all of a sudden, it was like, literally, like someone took a switch, like a light switch on the wall and turned it on. And the whole atmosphere in the room changed and she sat up and she said, wow, I feel better, you know. And we saw a miracle before our eyes. We saw, we saw this moment when she just, uh, just suddenly clicked and, and was 100%. And if you go to the next picture there, you'll see me and her now. Uh, and the doctors have done several tests. They checked again and again to make sure that she was fine. And uh, the doctor came to me a while later and he said, uh, Ed, uh, I need to tell you something. Your daughter is not 100%. Your daughter is 120%. <laughs> like, <laughs> praise God. Every, he said, every test we've done has come back like way better than we expected it to come back. And she's just really, really healthy. And so I actually kept these pictures and I kept the documents from the hospital because I want my daughter to know all her life that God saved her life. And he saved it for a reason. He did a miracle in her life for a reason. And I, uh, and pastor mentioned that my daughter is getting baptized. 
And it's actually this daughter. She's six years old, and she came to us a few weeks ago and said, I want to get baptized. And we're like, seriously? And we had to talk to her to make sure she understood exactly what that meant. And the more we talked to her, the more we realized she understands exactly what that means. And we're so proud of her. And, and of course, I changed my flight for Ukraine so that I could be there when she gets baptized on April 7th. And we're just really excited. But remember what I told people before, that Ukraine, going to Ukraine was like one of my kids was in emergency. And, and I used to say that, and it happened. And then God did a miracle. So I take that as a sign that there's a miracle coming in Ukraine. There's a miracle. And, and what I've seen since that time is that God is doing great miracles, actually. And uh, we just need to watch them and look for them and, and be amazed at what God is doing right now in Ukraine. I'd like to share just a few stories this morning, stories that you don't hear on the news about uh, what's happening in Ukraine and maybe give you a little bit different perspective from a spiritual standpoint, from a Christian standpoint of what's really happening there. If you go to the next picture, uh, we see this on the news all the time. And this actually, one of our workers took this picture in the city of Kriverog, where a missile landed just in front of the building. and. Uh, because the explosion uh, hit the building so hard, it was at night, people were sleeping in the building, but when the explosion hit, it hit the gas lines as well and blew the gas lines, which caused the fire then that uh, um, obviously you can see destroyed uh, much of the building. And uh, so even after the impact, then the fire started. The sad part was in this particular situation was that once the fire started, all the apartments in that building have metal doors. Like the main entrance door is a metal door with a bolt lock, you know, for safety. But because the fire was so hot, it expanded the metal doors and the people couldn't, they couldn't get out of their apartments. And so in all those apartments, the people had to, many of them, uh, jump from the balconies. And so uh, people were hurt in, in different manners and, and the, uh, the destruction is just, it's mind boggling. It's, uh, so our team was there right away and even in this situation, we had four young boys that came, you know, they were like, came up to our team and they wanted to volunteer to help and we were doing everything we could and then one of our workers saw these four young boys that wanted to help and thinking like, what can they do, you know? And then, well, she started to tell them, well, you can help with this, you can help with that. And these four little boys uh, just amazed her how much they could do and how excited they were just to help out. And those four young boys are still working with our mission today. <laughs> they've, uh, their lives have been changed by the power of God and they've, they've come in with our mission, with our team. I've I've gone to their homes and visited with their parents and, uh, and their parents have been completely amazed uh, how the change in these boys uh, has happened. And so in the midst of chaos, you see God doing amazing things, like, like doing great things with these young boys. And it's almost like, you know, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times at the same time. And isn't that true in our lives often? Isn't it sometimes that it takes, certainly did for me, it takes the worst of times to get us to focus on what we should focus on, to get us to kind of shake us up enough to change us on the inside. If you go to the next picture, I'm standing there in front of a a building, this was a, it was like a cultural hall in one of the towns where we were evacuating people. Uh, pastor Sergei is not standing right with me there. I'm gonna talk about two different Pastor Sergeis today. Um, but first, Pastor Sergei was evacuating people from this area and he evacuated uh, 136 people from the bomb shelter under this building. And um, 
He told me one time he had 19 people in his Dodge minivan. 19 people. <laughs> if you can imagine that, how would you even do that? Uh, but he was driving them uh, out of that city where the missiles were coming in. And uh, he, as he got out of the city, he had gotten them all out of this bomb shelter. As he got out of the city, there was a gas station that was open. So Pastor Sergei pulled into the gas station and he went in and he was thankful to be able to get some gas. And then he noticed they had one of these hot dog things there. And they had like about 20 hot dogs on this roller. And so he says to me, give me the 20 hot dogs, right? And he brought out all these hot dogs and handed them out to everybody who was in his van. And there was a lady sitting in the front. And he said she was actually three people away from him in the front of the minivan. And uh, she was just weeping, just weeping as she was eating the hot dog. Pastor Sergei's a bit of a joker. You know, he's always making light of uh, even difficult situations. So he says to her, is the hot dog not that good? <laughs> and she said, no, it's actually, I haven't eaten in six days. And then she said, but that's not why I'm crying. And he said, why are you crying? He said, she said, because in the bomb shelter, I thought the whole world was ending. And I'm so shocked to see at the gas station that life is just going on. And um, it had a big impact on him and obviously drove him to you know, continue to evacuate as many people as he could. And Pastor Sergey and the other guys that worked with us at that time evacuating people evacuated over 5,000 people from uh, those regions, 5,000. I was standing with Pastor Sergey in front of this building. There was a couple other workers around, and he was showing us the destruction from this missile, and there were five people that were killed who were in the building because they had a baking bread area. And <laughs> while we're standing there, one of the workers said, but Sergey, remember, we evacuated 136 people from this building from the bomb shelter and he says yeah and the guy said that was four days before the missile hit and standing right there with me Sergey realized that they had saved the lives because if they had still been there you know they would have all been gone like the the underneath the building the bomb shelter was completely destroyed by the missile and so uh Moments like these, just realizing that in the midst of, you know, utter chaos, you know, God was spurring people on just to do. And we talked about this. We were talking about this last. There's something inside of us, every one of us as Christians. It's in there. Like as followers of Christ, it's in there. And if, if it comes to that in Canada, I guarantee you, if anything chaotic or chaos or, or catastrophe happens here, it will rise up inside of you and you'll see heroes come out. We've seen it in Ukraine, like ordinary, relatively ordinary people just turning into heroes before our eyes uh, and God spurring them on to do amazing things. Next picture. Um, we've, in the past two years since the war started, uh, with the help of uh, Huntley Street, Erdo, several other different organizations, we have given groceries to over 200,000 families in Ukraine. We have delivered groceries to them in different ways. If someone would have told me before the war started that we would give groceries to 10,000 families, I would have said that's impossible. There's no way we could pull that off. But uh, God has, again, just done this amazing miracle by providing the funds and the, you know, and many times those families, they don't need the two weeks worth of groceries, let's say, that we're giving them. It's not like they're going to die without that. But what it does is it gives them that, that they can then replace the money that they would have spent on that. They can do something else with it that they need, whether it's medicine or school supplies or I guess in most of those areas, they're not buying any school supplies, but other things that they need uh, for their families. 
Most of these families in those areas are living on less than $200 uh, per family per month. That's basically the budget that they live on. And being able to do that for them is just a great, it really is a great miracle. And I can stand here this morning and say, you guys have helped with that. You've been a big part of that. And so I want to say, as God is with me this morning, thank you. Thank you for helping. It's made a huge difference in people's lives, and I've seen it myself personally. Next picture. Uh, some of you know this, not everybody, but we have this program in Ukraine. It's called McJoyful Christmas. And every year up to the, when the war started, we took orphan children from orphanages in Ukraine to McDonald's at Christmas time. Now, uh, McDonald's in Ukraine is actually the elite place to eat. Like, ladies get dressed up in evening gowns in many regions over there to go to McDonald's because for them, it's extremely expensive and it's the best place in town. Uh, and, but I, uh, I knew that the orphan kids from the orphanages, they would never get to go there. So one Christmas, about 20 years ago, we started, we took... 46 children to McDonald's at Christmas time, and uh, uh, it, was, um, it was amazing. Like, these kids were shaking in their seats. They were so excited to be at McDonald's, you can imagine. Um, and we're kind of telling them, you know, don't get too excited. It's not <laughs> uh, the food is not that great, you know. It's not like... Uh, but uh, uh, after we gave them the meal, they then... Um, folded up the wrappers from the burger, folded up uh, all the wrappers, you know, from the fries and other. They put the toy and everything back in the box. They even folded up the paper placemat on the tray and took it back to the orphanage with them. And we realized that we had this opportunity to share the gospel with these kids. And, and everything we would say there in the McDonald's restaurant, we knew they would remember all year. So what an opportunity to say something significant. So we started right in the McDonald's restaurant. We would have a full presentation of the birth of Jesus. And our team, it was just amazing. Like we're right in the McDonald's restaurant and they had like a stage set up in there. They had. They had characters coming in and out, and then, and then uh, the lady, one of our workers would say, and then the three, what were they, three characters from the east, they came, and in would walk Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and Pluto, you know, in costumes, and then, and then she would be like, no, no, it wasn't them, and it was three wise men. Oh, okay, and then they'd go out, and the three wise men would come in. It was amazing, like they did such a phenomenal job. And the great thing was is that everyone in the McDonald's, not just the kids, they were watching, right? So we had this, uh, this phenomenal period of time, almost 20 years, where we were doing this raid in the restaurants. And, uh, and McDonald's was very excited, you know, because we were doing this for orphan kids. And, and it turned into a great program. We had uh, some years, there was a few years, we had over 5,000 children. And you can imagine orchestrating that in different cities and kids coming in and out. Just a phenomenal outreach. And, and since the war started, they closed the McDonald's for a while. And this year they opened them up and uh, we weren't able to take kids into the restaurant. But uh, over 3,000 children this year had Happy Meals delivered to them and a full presentation of the gospel by our team. And uh, just a real amazing thing. So for $10 per child. We're able to do this for every child and set up this uh, great thing. And, and God has spoken to children. We had one uh, church. They had two sets of children come in, almost 100 children in, in each uh, service. And they came in and we had the Happy Meals delivered. And while we were there, one of our workers just spontaneously uh, stood up and asked if after the presentation if there were any kids that wanted to give their hearts to Jesus Christ uh, and every single child she she was blown away every single child in the service put their hands up and she said um, maybe you didn't understand exactly what I said like I'm asking you 
If you would really like to give your hearts to Jesus Christ today and pray with me. And if there's anyone here that wants to do that, and again, every single hand in the auditorium went up and we've seen just God doing amazing things uh, through this in, in a time of war. We go to the next picture. Uh, we've kind of been um, working with about 100 churches in Ukraine, different churches, and these are amazing people. I, I can't emphasize how much, uh, you know, how, how you're seeing heroes right before. I mean, you're seeing people that have, their lives have been changed. They've given their lives for helping people. And, and one of the things that really surprises me is the joy. I think that was the biggest surprise when I first went back. I thought I was going to find people in torment, people in wondering what's going on, people, you know, like uh, confused and, and uh, in chaos. But instead, I found joy. I found uh, people who were excited. You know, doing. We've had in uh, many of the towns where, where some of these churches are, uh, in one town in particular, in Ivanovka, uh, near Kropovnitsky, it's a city in, in Ukraine, the mayor of the town gave her life to Christ in one of the churches. And then she led everyone in her town council office to the Lord. They were all now born-again Christians, the entire council, and I was there with them. And not only that, they right in the town council offices, she took me over to the one area, she took me to an office, she said, this is our children's ministry office. And they had, they had gotten Bibles from Samaritan's Purse and other things, and they were, they were doing children's ministry. Whenever kids came in and had any needs, they would bring them. And they had a lady, she was a new Christian, and now she was uh, working with kids there. And this would not have happened. It would not have happened five years ago in Ukraine. Something like that. And now this is happening all across the country. We're seeing uh, people responding simply to, because the church is meeting the needs of the refugees, of the people, and uh, it's, it's bringing them, as you can imagine, just amazing joy to be able to be that rescue, to be that help, to be that uh, answer to people's prayers. Uh, and uh, they're doing that by and large because they're getting resources from us, from our churches in Canada. Go to the next picture. Uh, revival has broken out in many areas all across Ukraine. This is uh, the, actually this is the pastor Sergey here, the first one I was talking about in his church, and uh, he had roughly 40 people in his church uh, before the war started. Right now, you can't see them all there, but he gets up to a hundred people into that small hall. Uh, and he does it three times on a Sunday. And uh, just a real hunger for God there. These people are not there because they're receiving groceries or something. They're, these are people that are genuinely coming out for church services now in a church that had 40 people before. So uh, are just a, a real hunger for God in Ukraine right now. If you go to the next picture, uh, this is at the church that you guys support. Uh, this is Pastor Sergei's church, and I was there for the baptism. We baptized uh, 30-some people in a swimming pool that, <laughs> that was deeper than my neck, <laughs> and, and that was interesting. Um, also, the color of the water was somewhat interesting, you know, and uh, <laughs> I was like, well, we're kind of close to the nuclear place that's be maybe, you know, who knows, so... Uh, it was, uh, it was just a phenomenal day. I, I know you can imagine these are all new Christians uh, being baptized there. If you go to the next picture, this is uh, Pastor Sergey there, the second Pastor Sergey, the one that your church supports. And uh, he gave me a carpet that was handmade with uh, our Loads of Love logo on it. It was just unbelievable. Like it's a... I wish I had it here, I could show you, like phenomenal. They had someone make this by hand and presented it to me. And I'm, I'm the fortunate one, like really. I mean, I get to take 
all the support that you guys give, I go over there and I hand it out like some, like I'm Bill Gates or something, you know. And uh, uh, Bill Gates probably not the best choice. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I'm wealthy. Let's put it that way. So, so, and they give me gifts and stuff. But really, I'm I'm here today to tell you, like this is for you. Like they're doing this for you. You guys are the ones that are giving. And uh, they even gave me flowers, you know, that <laughs> something they do in Ukraine, they give men flowers. I, I still don't really uh, <laughs> go for that that much. But anyway, uh, phenomenal thing. And not everyone knows this story, but the church that you support, Sergey, I've known for over, and his wife, Nastya, I've known them for over 25 years. And for 25 years, they had around 25 people in their church, 25 years. Sometimes 15, sometimes 30, you know, they kind of went up and down. Sergey worked part-time. But Sergey believed, he believed that, maybe I could even say he, he believed he was a big shot in God's eyes. He believed that God was going to do great things. He genuinely even prophesied and had prophecies over him that God was going to do great things with him. And uh, he worked and worked there, worked part-time, did the church, and then um, the war started. He contacted me and he said, Ed, we don't know what to do. I've lost my job. Most of the people in my church have lost their jobs. And, and at that time, Erdo, Huntley Street, all these organizations had started to give us some funds and churches here. And I said, Sergey, what if I sent some funds just to help you and your family and you can start helping people? Would, you, would, would that work for you? <laughs> He's like, would that work for me? <laughs> of course it would work for me. Like, he was so excited and began to reach out to people. And uh, if you go to the last picture there, I'm pretty sure that's the last one. Uh, um, working, that's the second last one. Working in an area, this is two days ago. Yeah, go back to that other one. I will mention that. Just two days ago, this was the dam in uh, Zaporozhye, right near his church, not less than a kilometer from his church where a uh, missile struck the hydroelectric uh, dam there. And, and, um, and then if you go to the last picture, that's, uh, that's his church when I was there last time. And you can't even see, but there's, there's almost 400 people sitting in his church now. And there's people lined up uh, by the back door outside of the church. They come 45 minutes before the service. I, when I was there, they were there 45 minutes before the service just so they could get a seat. And uh, just the hunger for God. And you can see, if you look closely in the picture, joy. Just joy, absolute joy. And uh, I said, you know, you, you guys are just... Uh, I said, I need to get a selfie so that I can take it to Timmins and show the people uh, uh, the church that they're supporting. And they were so happy, so eager. Um, and really, I know every one of them, if they were here, they would say thank you. And I thank you. And I pray that God blesses you. And thank you for having me here today and making me feel like a big shot. <laughs> thank you very much. God bless you. Well, during our uh, Christmas Eve service that we joined with South Porcupine, if you remember that Christmas Eve service, we don't always take an offering at Christmas Eve, but we did. And the, that money uh, went to support uh, the, the McDonald's. We had committed to Ed before that Christmas Eve service that you can count on us. I think it was, we said 100 kids, I think it was, I don't remember. But we told you beforehand, believing that we'd get the money in in the Christmas Eve service, and we did. And uh, so you've been part of that. So that McDonald's, uh, that's you doing that and so we're so grateful for that uh, when Ed was here last time he shared with us about Sergey and the church there and that he was doing what we did with you Christmas Eve he committed dollars to him uh, to be known and I said how much is that and, uh, and then I asked our board if we could take that on as ours and so really Ed would say to me you should hang a picture of Sergey Pastor Sergey in your lobby with the rest of the staff of the TPC Church, because he's on staff 
at a different campus. We have a, st we have a campus pastor from TPC in the Ukraine, Amen. right? Because we pay his salary, his whole salary. And you do that every single week, every single month. And we're so, so grateful for the opportunity to partner with you, Ed. We're going to conclude our time together and invite you to some fellowship and you can, uh, in this fellowship hall and you can talk to Ed further. But I want us to pray for Ed and I'm going to ask you in a moment just to come and stand in the front, Ed. And uh, Ed is a, I don't know if you noticed in the bulletin, but I put something in there if you didn't notice. But Ed is a big shot. Ed is a big shot. Ed is the uh, general superintendent of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Ukraine. That's a new thing from uh, last, uh, last time he was with us. They have asked him to represent him and to oversee over 100 churches and in the Ukraine. And he is a big shot. He won't tell you that, but I'm telling you that. He didn't tell the board last night either. I said, you know, there's been a change since Ed's been here last time. And he walks in humility, and I think that's why God opened a door for him. Sometimes we try to push our way into things. If we just be available and let God do the pushing, let God do the opening of the doors. The Bible says that God opens doors that no man can open, and God closes doors that no man can close. And uh, so you need to just trust the Lord to acknowledge him day by day by day. Even that song we sang earlier, you know, I offer myself to you today. Have your way in me and see what God does. And so maybe, Ed, would you just mind standing in the front? And I ask the leadership team and anyone else who would like just to come. We do believe on the laying on of hands here at TPC and just pray, praying blessing on people. So leadership team, if you'd come. I don't know, many of you are married, and I'm going to ask my wife in a moment to come and pray. Many of you are married, and I know what it's like. I, I talked to Ed this morning and uh, breakfast, and uh, I would love to go to the Ukraine. Uh, the problem is I have a wife that I'm not sure would let me go to the Ukraine in a war. And, uh, but he talks about his wife letting him go uh, every single time, 12 times, trusting God that God would protect him, and God would use him, almost pushing him out the door, saying, He's like, is it time for you to go again? <laughs> the people need you, is what she tells him. People need you, you need to go. And so, Tara, would you come to the pulpit? And uh, just, those that are down there, would you just place a hand on Ed this morning? And uh, let's just believe God. Would you stand, church, with me? And we'll pray over Ed, and then, Tara, if you'd also pray for our fellowship time, the, the meal that we have. Father God, we love you. We love you. We thank you, God, that you loved us and you've poured loads of love into us so we could pour loads of love into others. God, we thank you for Ed, that you called him when he was little Eddie Spaghetti on the tomato field, that you knew then who he would be and what he would be doing. And Lord, we do honor him as a big shot, but Lord, we honor you as the biggest of the big shots. We acknowledge, Lord, that it is your call, that it is your power on his life. Lord, we thank you that you strategically placed him so he would be where he could be of maximum use to you. Lord, we thank you that he availed himself, that he said, yes, Lord, I can do this, I can do this. Even when he felt like he couldn't, he, he trusted in your power. So Lord, we pray a prayer of thanksgiving for all that you have done, all that you've put into place, all that we have already seen accomplished. And Lord, we pray for what you are doing in the Ukraine. Lord, it breaks our hearts to see the devastation they're in but lord it breaks our hearts in a different way to know there are people in ukraine praying for revival in canada god i pray that you would break our heart for what breaks yours and lord what breaks your heart is souls who need to hear the message that jesus saves and lord we thank you that you can use any situation that you have used the war to bring about your kingdom here on earth and lord we pray for your kingdom to come to this place here in timmins lord we pray for ourselves at the same time lord we speak words of life, words of hope, words of blessing upon Ed, upon loads of love, upon Sergei, upon all the ministries happening in the Ukraine. Lord, we, we pray also a blessing on our fellowship time and upon the food. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Don't move yet, church. Stay here if you don't mind. I'm going to ask you to do something reverse. Uh, if Just stay, don't move. Don't only stay here. Stay, don't only move. Let me move. We're live streaming, right? 
And so Sergei and his wife Natasha. Na Nastia. Nastia. Is she nasty? <laughs> no, no, just, no, I'm just kidding. So we're going to do a reverse. Uh, Pastor Sergio and his wife tune in to TPC almost every Sunday. They're the, one of the first people to like our live streaming. And so why don't you, as many as possible, want to come to the front and look to the back screen and let's say hello to them because they're more than likely watching. And so could you just come, church? Come on, church. Just come on down. It's okay. And uh, look back at the camera. And let's just... Uh, Sergey and Nastia. Nastia. Come up here so you can say it nice. Come up here. Uh, I'll see it. So let, let everybody come down okay. and then I'll get Ed to greet them. Yes. Maybe even say something yeah, in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ukraine. Because yeah. they're watching. Amen? So do, let's do like them and yeah. give them a thumbs up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Sergey and Nastia. We сейчас приветствуем вас из Тиминс, Канада. Говорим большой привет. Мы с вами. We are with you. Мы с вами. Аллилуйя. Слава Богу. Thank you, church. Let's go have some fellowship. God bless you in the Ukraine. And thank you, Ed, this morning. God bless you.